Good evening and welcome. Bar Pask here to paint for you. I'm going to paint an 8x10 stretch canvas. Um, one thing I was going to point out to you, just a nice little tip. Uh, I paint on, you know, frequently Centurion panels that I buy at Jerry's Artorama, but my stretch canvases I buy from Dick Blick. Uh, all my pet portraits I do on stretch canvases, and I usually paint the edge just to give them the option to frame it or not. But um, I'm buying a better quality canvas now that um, actually have the splines in them. They don't even have the staples on the back. But this is one I bought a while back. And when I got it out of the pack, it was loose. And that's a common thing. Now, over the years, I have tried all kinds of things. I've taken water and soaked the back of it and let it dry. You know, sometimes that work works. Sometimes they don't dry nice and flat. Tonight I toned this, as you see, with my acrylic, which I do commonly, and a very wet brush. So that really seemed to tighten it up nicely. So, you know, you might just brush water on the front instead of, you know, on the back like I've been doing it, even though it's gessoed, or there's another reason to maybe put a tone color on there while you're at it. Um, all right, tonight we're going to paint. I went to the grocery and I bought these lovely pears. I love pears. I just, something I've always enjoyed painting. And this would be an excellent thing if you're new to painting. Um, simple subject, you can play around with the composition. Um, I may pull this one a little this way so it's actually catching a bit more of that edge. Um, but these have nice color in them and nice stems, which <laughs> you would have laughed if you saw me at the grocery. I was trying to find a place to set the pears to make sure they had bottoms and they could sit. But I like that they're not all the same. Um, the stems are not even coming out of the same place. This one kind of leans to the right, as you see. And as you can see, I laid one down. But pears are just, uh, to me, just a wonderful thing to paint. You know, um, a lot of variety of color in them. They're mostly, I don't know how they look to you, but they're, they're yellow with a green cast to them. And, and they get that nice warm color in the front too, which I liked. So again, um, I may go over before we get going and just pull this one on the right a little bit over, maybe so it overlaps the edge of that one a little bit. Of course, again, it's all about where you stand. So we're going to use our view catcher, and I'm setting it for an 8x10. Not all the measurements are on there, but right there is an 8x10. So you look through there and try to set up your composition. Um, if you don't have one, you need one, if you're working from life. So we'll get a little brush, and we will take um, some transparent red oxide and some um, ultramarine blue. That's a really nice dark. Thin it down a little bit. And what I do when I look through here, which I, I explain this pretty much every time, is I decide, I look through it, decide, look at my setup over there, and decide how I want my composition to look. And then I use my brush when I hold it over there and say, okay, the top of that pair is hitting there, the edge of that one's hitting there, and then I transfer those marks over here. So again, when you're, when you're painting from life, every movement you make changes that. So I want to think about the fact that um, this is a canvas that someone might frame. So I either want to run the object off or keep it away from the edge enough to where they frame it that there's a space there. You know, don't stop it like right there. That would be a really bad bad idea. So, go, we go forward and back, pull it back toward me if I want more space, and I think I do. That looks like that's about as far as we're going on that side. That one's in a little further, maybe there. And again, every move I make here, you know, every time I put it to my eye, it's different. Now, that's about where the top of that one is. I gotta think about whether I want them larger in life. Does it bother me if they're larger than life? Some people don't like to paint objects larger than life. Um, I find with pets, for myself, I don't like to paint them larger than life. Um, a while back I did a cat, a close-up of a cat on an 8x10, and uh, 
which made it larger than life. And uh, I don't know, it felt awkward to me. I just did an eight by 10 of a dog's face, but it's a big dog, so it pretty much was life size. So I'm gonna look through here again. Let me think about that. Because again, you know, do I want the pair that big? I'd be pretty much probably life size. Another way you can handle this is to hold it over your setup and just look at the space around it, which is considered negative space, and kind of draw that pattern too and block in the whole setup. That's another way you can work. Helen Van Wyck did that frequently. So let's look through here and think about that. You know, I might, you know, they might be pretty much life size by the time we're done. Another thing she would do sometimes too is she would just draw like circles, like spaces for objects, and then she'd create it inside of that, that uh, shape. Okay, so let's think about this again. First one's about there. Sorry if I'm bumping you. You're right in front of me. Okay. And the first pair ends about there. The pair that's laying down. He's over pretty far. Okay, let's let's think about this. We're just gonna draw it very casually. We're not stressing about it. If we have to redo it, we will. Kind of using some straight lines. I did two cute paintings today. I uh, I've been using a little bit. Um, I painted a few things from that reference-free site I found on um, Facebook and uh, did a couple of alpa alpacas today, which is not something I don't frequently paint, but they, oh, I should have carried them in here. They came out cute, two different colored ones, kind of shaggy and um, the other one's white and uh, it was fun. Now what you can do is look at this negative shape between this pair and that pair and see where they're hitting. I just have always enjoyed painting pairs and then as you come around here how far up before you hit the bottom of that pair. Going to a Christmas party tomorrow. I just cannot believe how close Christmas is. When I got the decorations out this year, I said to somebody, I feel like I just put them away. Maybe, I think that's part of aging, that the time just seems to pick up. It's not that way when you're a kid, is it? It's so long to Christmas, and summer vacation seems so long, and uh, I, again, I think that's just part of growing older, I guess. Okay, so this comes to the bottom of the pair. It doesn't come down too far till we hit the bottom of this one. but I've got all my commissions done. I'm in good shape. I've got all my gifts wrapped. So this is kind of a nice time, really. Like today, I, I, you know, when I went and painted, I just uh, worked on what I wanted. I didn't, you know, have anything I had to get done. But I'll use these for a show. I've got a show in March, I mean in February, so I'll be using them for that. And I've got fabric behind it. Uh, I got my setup pretty much like I showed you in the last video. I've got the illustration board behind it. I'm trying to block the light with a cardboard on top. And I put it on a box because I'm standing. Yellow is one of those colors, I've probably said it before, that I've heard people say, um, if you have yellow in your painting, you should start with that. That's an opinion, like so many things. Um, you do want to keep it clean, though, and that's one thing. You, you know, you muddy it up if you. Okay, now let's look at the shape of these a little bit because 
Obviously, that's not really how they're shaped. I went to a workshop one time with Nancy Frank, and um, I think I can't recall if they actually told us to bring some setups with us. I think they did because, um, you know, some objects. And I brought some fake fruit. You know, I have some pretty good looking fake fruit. Well, somebody <laughs> grabbed my fake pears and uh, was starting to paint with them. Um, she had lots of things we could use, which was nice, fresh flowers, fresh fruit. She did not want them using fake fruit. <laughs> she grabbed it right out of there. And uh, um, it's probably too perfect when you think about it. You know, when you're painting from life, it, you know, the shape necessarily, again, isn't perfect. So, but yep, she did not want them using my fake pears, even though I thought they looked pretty good. Okay, one of the things I'm going to do before we put any color, because again, we're working with yellow and green. I want it cleaner. I don't want to pick up a bunch of this. So I'm going to wipe the heavy stuff off. Might not matter, but. All right, do we like that? You know, it's kind of all in the middle. But I, again, I needed to either run one off or, you know, keep them in. And I chose to keep them in. So once you frame it, it should frame nicely. I've never used a floater frame. Um, if you don't know what that is, usually you paint the edges of your canvas. And uh, a floater frame usually is spaced out from your canvas a little bit. So you don't hide any of the canvas, which works well if you want to paint like right to the edge. I watched a guy mount a painting in one the other day and I never gave him a thought, much thought but he put it in from the front and he put some spacers in so he had it in there perfectly. Then he turned it over and screwed through the frame right into the stretcher bars. So no hardware, just some screws. You know, I use little brackets that go like that. Um, put a lot of money in hardware so that was new to me. I thought there's another reason to use floater frames. <laughs> Always learn something new, don't we? All right, I think I'll bring you over and we'll mix some color. As we're looking over there, again, they're yellow with a green cast, um, the rosy color in the front. So I'm going to want to mix three values like I always do. So let's bring you over and we'll um, We'll play around, lower you down. I broke my favorite palette knife. Don't pry stuff open with your palette knife. There's a lesson in there, right? Oh my goodness. So I need to buy another one. All right, this is Cad Yellow Medium, which is my warm yellow. My cool yellow is there, which uh, don't know if we'll use any of that. We might, you know, use a little bit. So we'll put a pretty good pile out. We're going to be painting three of these guys. Now, when we put blue in it, it's obviously going to turn it green. We've got a shadow side, which is going to be uh, cooler. And again, it's going to, so we'll put some blue in there, which again, is going to turn it green. But it looks a little warmer than that to me, so I'm going to put a little um, a laser and crimson in it. Now it's too red. It's just push and pull back and forth. Put more blue in it. Even then put a little more yellow in it. Again, it looks too warm to me. So, fairly dark. Might be too dark, but that's okay.
I'm looking over there. We'll take a little bit of our warm blue, which is our cobalt. Pull it toward green. Put some white in there and lighten that up. So already we've got three values. I'm going to mix a little orange off here to the side like I frequently do in case I want to warm it up and throw that into there. So we'll start with that and see. This is probably too dark. Um, and probably too warm. I'm looking at it over there again. It's all a guess. You know. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if we get it right the first time. You know, just so you get it there eventually, right? All right, come back up. You're just a little off to the left. All right, I'm going to try my soft brush again. Um, I've been kind of having fun with that lately. I painted with that today. It's not a bristle. It's um, a Royal and Lang nickel, and it's pretty soft, but it's kind of fun to use. Sometimes, though, with a stretch canvas, I have to work to get it into the panel a little bit. Of course, I'm going to want to see a lot of my pink, too. So let's start with our darkest dark. So we, and because you're in my way, I'm forced to stay back, which is a good thing. You know, I want to stay back. If you've never done a pair, you need to paint a pair. There, again, I don't know, I just like doing pairs. You know, and we may adjust that shadow even later, but for now we'll get it in there. And this side of the pair is in shadow. You know, the whole thing may not be that solid color, this is darker here than here. I'm squinting over there looking. So let's lighten it up a little bit as we go down. I didn't mix it up really well. I'm kind of mixing it on the canvas. Yeah, I want to make sure, you know, we separate these two pairs too. And if we do them exactly the same color and value, that may not happen. I'm looking over there, and this is the dark side of this pair, and it's actually similar in value and color to that. Kind of darker toward the back here. See, again, it takes a little more effort to cover the stretch canvases than it does boards. Yeah, this is actually the shadow from that pair. So this edge over here is darker. Are you ready for Christmas? We were talking today about, um, I have a couple new nephews and my I'm sorry, yeah, they're my great nephews. And uh, my nephew brought his new son over here the other day and his wife was saying she doesn't plan on letting him believe in Santa Claus, basically. Um, to me, it was, it was really a fun thing when I was a kid and I brought the same thing to my daughter, but you know, everybody to their own. Um, <laughs> 
you know, and we all didn't agree on that today. Um, one gal never really, I don't want to say led her kids, but she, you know, and I, I have to say she's, she's Jewish too, so they don't celebrate Christmas. Um, but I thought believing in Santa was great fun. Kind of a, I guess it's kind of a lie, but I don't know. Even when you find out, wasn't it still worth believing? It was just magical. I'm into my lightest uh, mixture, if you can't tell there. This is my light sign. And I don't know how this color reads to you because it's going on a pink background. Every color around it, you know, affects it. And some people probably wouldn't agree with toning for that reason. But if you stay white, then you're working with that value too. A lot of people do a mid-tone, which I, I think that's not a bad thing either. I just like the bright colors shown through. And I'm going to the next value, which is a little more green. And you probably noticed when I showed you the pair, the uh, front has a nice red kind of color, and we are going to put that in, of course. Seems to get a little darker toward the bottom. I'm also looking over there thinking that I see a little kind of reflected light here, probably from the white tablecloth. I'm not getting light enough. Let's get a little lighter. We'll see if that works as we move along. And there are some uh, highlights on there. Okay, the color of the, the warm color that's on there is very pretty. And to me, the red, actually, I'm going to mix my two reds together. I'm looking at it and a little white. Let's see how that looks. Uh, it's too pink. So put a little more crimson in there. I'm going to just try do a little dry brushing. 
See if I can get some of that color on there. That's the only highlights I see. And I broke my favorite palette knife. I'm gonna have to buy me a new one. I have lots of them, you know, but it's funny, I don't know. You find one that's your favorite. And the one I broke was my favorite. We'll see how that works. I might. Oops. Nope. All right, let's look at the stems. The stems are uh, a warm color. So I'm going to use transparent red oxide. And some white. They're actually just kind of a chunky stem, so I'm going to paint them like I see them. This one's got a bit of a top on it. Staying with the same brush. Wouldn't have to, but. All right, let's paint the background in. And then we'll come back and see if we need to look on the pair some more. Again, I have my dark screen back there. Okay, now I just put up there what I saw, but as you can see, I've got this pretty much divided right in half. I'm not going to want to do that. And I try not to do a real hard edge between my foreground and my background. But again, I'm going to want to go, you know, bring that down some. So let's mix up something for the background. We'll just do some transparent red oxide and small terrain blue. Now we don't have any shadows on it. And I'm going to lighten it a little bit with some white because it's not, you know, it's not black at all. 
but I think I want to keep it toward the warm side. I think that's more attractive. And again, we're not going to want to cover up all our pink. And again, I'm probably going to want to bring it down maybe to there. Yeah, I just did what I what I saw without giving it really any thought. Can't mindlessly be painting, can we? And I'm mixing more and more color as I go. which changes it all the time, which is okay. I may have to even get more paint out here. It doesn't look much different, does it? Go around and put some of it here and there. And, and that's about there, isn't it? I was talking to somebody the other day that had saw a demo done by a painter they like and they were talking about how um, at the end she came in and just put in a real unexpected color and I said to her, that's what C.W. Mundy talks about and she said, yeah, that was her mentor or something so she's very familiar with him and uh, she said she threw in a really bright color, just a couple strokes at the top and how well it worked. But he talks about that. He talks about an alien stroke, I think he calls it. But C.W. Mundy talks about um, when you get to the end of it, put in something very unexpected, whether it can be um, maybe you get out a palette knife when you haven't used a palette knife and you throw in a chunky stroke or a color that would just, you know, you wouldn't expect to find at all, maybe. He believes in doing that. All right, this giving me a chance to look at the shape of these pairs. I want a very, you know, color and value in this background, probably too, while I'm, you know, get a little lighter, a little darker. That really will um, show your object too. Like if you want to lose an edge, you want to go close in value. But if you really want an edge to stand out, throw in a lighter, lighter value. I'll be eating some pears, won't I? Should have bought donuts, huh? There's a guy I follow on uh, Facebook. I think he gets hired to do a lot of food objects, um, but he has a real nice job on him. He painted like a club sandwich the other day. Um, really nice. I'm trying to think of his name. Noah something, I think it is. Anyway, um, yeah, makes me, I've seen him do big boy sandwiches, and which is a restaurant around here, Frisch's. Makes me want to go buy a hamburger and just paint it. I will sometime, right? Probably. See, and there's some of my initial drawing, which I, I will be leaving some of that. You know, I like seeing that. Um, now I've kind of lost the shape of this and I want to bring that back in. You know that uh, pair comes way over and I, I want you to know that so.
and the bottom is very light. Um, so we'll use some of the same color, except I think I'll probably, well, I've got a lot more white in it, of course. I was thinking I might introduce a little yellow into it, too. You can see sometimes I have a stripe in there. It's because I didn't mix the color real well. Kind of mixing it on canvas. Now this would be one, we'll think about it here. We could, um, bring down some of the yellow. I like doing that sometimes, kind of like a reflection. And I'm painting around the shadows that I see. Just playing around, might be, might not keep it, we'll see. Oops, I'm painting my phone now. <laughs> it happens.
three fine pairs, right? Just no matter how exciting we find it. Going for something unexpected there. I just keep hitting my phone. That's kind of a purple I threw in there. Just something for no reason, just because it's a purple's a compliment to yellow. Um, so hopefully that pair then will draw your eye. Just a little lighter in that area. Actually, I missed it, but there actually is like a shadow like that from that stem. If you were painting in acrylics, you know, you could take thin alum acrylic and splatter on speckles. Um, there's probably a way to do it in oils, but... All right, what do we think of that? I'm going to try just to kind of, we're going to blend that in, but I'm going to try just kind of define the edge. We wouldn't really be seeing any of that one, would we? Not sure at all how I feel about the bottom here. I may be going back over it. I'm crowded here too. If I let's try moving it now, it's tilted for you, but move it to the edge a little bit. Some of this red in here that I see. And you can come in and soften some edges if you want. And work on the shape of your pair. Have some lost edges. I'm looking at that. And yeah. 
I kind of see that. I think, again, it's reflected up from the table. All right, we got our highlights in. I am feeling like I need some more variation in the background, so I probably, I may not do it tonight, but I probably am going to go back and, uh, you know, put more color in the background, make it more interesting. People sometimes like to darken the corners, kind of create a vignette. That's something you can do too. Pull the eye more toward the center. All right, I'm going to quit picking at it. It's been, oh, geez, only 47 minutes. That's pretty quick. And we'll back you up and uh, see if we can put a mat around it for you. I'm not sure how successful I'll be with the way it's sitting there, but maybe. Let's see. Kind of give you an idea. Yeah, I can't really, I can't really do it very well, but it helps some, doesn't it, to clean it up a little bit? Again, that's an eight by ten stretch canvas, and I think it's fine. Um, let me get away and look at it too here. I think it's fine. I might want to do more to it to make, make again make it a bit more exciting. I might work on the reflections of the pairs. I might again put more value and uh, change in value in the background. So, but there's things the pairs are. I'm happy with the pairs. I'm just not so sure. I'm thrilled with everything around it. I may really kick up the light even in the foreground. So I just have to look at it, you know, and think about it. But uh, again, I'm okay with the pairs. I think. <laughs> When, when is it ever perfect? Never. Never. You have to accept that, right? It's a painting. All right. Well, listen, um, I may see you again before Christmas. We've got a little while. We'll see how things are going. But uh, if not, Merry Christmas. And uh, thank you. Thank you for visiting me. I know everybody's busy right now. Thank you for taking time out of your day. And I appreciate it so much. All right. And again, um, there's the pears again. It was fun. I always like painting pears. All right, again, Merry Christmas if I don't see you. Catch you soon.